Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman David. Today we're going to be looking at how Paul Pogba can save Jose Mourinho's Manchester United. Make sure to like that video and subscribe if you are new. Without further ado, let's get this party started. Manchester United have had a torrid start to the season, having already dropped points away at West Ham and Brighton and at home versus Tottenham and Wolves, but also exiting the Carabao Cup. Manchester United currently have a goal difference of minus one in the Premier League. They've already conceded seven goals in four games at home. Two fewer than in the entire campaign last season. What is going on with the defence? But also, going forward, United have been poor. They've only created ten big chances. Only one more than Cardiff City have managed this season. However, it's not all doom and gloom, as United showed in the second half against Newcastle. If they throw caution to the wind, they can still be feared. They created four big chances in that second half, one every 11.25 minutes. If Paul Pogba is to save Manchester United, Mourinho needs to revert back to the 4-2-3-1. Of course, David De Gea between the sticks picks himself, as well as Luke Shaw and Chris Smalling. There's two spots there in defence where United really need to fill that. Firstly, at centre-half, a short-term solution could be Nemanja Matic. He played there against Newcastle United and really added a little bit more when United were building up from the back, playing a few more direct passes into midfield and linking with his teammates. He can be the short-term solution there, but also can move into midfield if United need him in the transition. Transition. Of course, the long-term solution could be Kula Bali in January. The Napoli centre-half has excelled under Sarri and has looked great under Carlo Ancelotti this season, was man of the match against Liverpool in Napoli's 1-0 win in the Champions League. This season in Syria, he's won 15 out of his 16 tackles and also topped the charts last season behind Jorginho in terms of passes completed. Would be an asset both with United on the ball, but also defensively is an absolute beast. If you want to see a scout report on how Kula Bali would fit into Manchester United, smash that like button with thousands likes and we will be delivering you that straight into your inbox. In terms of the fullback, we all know that Ashley Young got turned inside and out against Newcastle. It's time for Delo to play every single week. We've done a scout report on Delo on the Statman Dave YouTube channel. Go and check that out if you want to find out more. But the big thing is he can deliver for a wide area and it defends like an Italian. Let's move into midfield. Of course, Paul Pogba is going to be playing in there with Fred. Given that Nemanja Matic is playing centre-half, Fred coming in makes a lot of sense, not only going forward, but defensively covering Paul Pogba in certain aspects of the game. But what this midfield will give is Paul Pogba in a deeper area, arguably playing as a deep-lying playmaker. Pogba has all the attributes to be a modern defensive midfielder. He's physical, he controls the game, and can make Manchester United tick with his direct passing. With Paul Pogba deeper in midfield for Manchester United, it will give them a number of benefits. Firstly, with the ball. Offensively, Pogba as a six, dropping in between the centre-backs to the left of the centre-backs, or alternatively to the right of the centre-backs, gives United a great platform to play those direct balls either over the top or into midfield. With Pogba dropping into the defence, this will create a three-man defence which will allow United to have a spare man at the back. If a team decides to press with two, you'll have the spare guy in that back three. If they, for example, throw a midfielder up to man mark Paul Pogba, there's going to be space inside for either Juan Mata or Alexis Sanchez to exploit. Alternatively, if it's a three-man attack and they're pressing three on three, there's going to be space for the wing backs. So having Paul Pogba in that deep area with his ability on the ball, if you leave him, he'll dictate. If you press him, there's going to be space in behind, which will give United a great platform to build up some attacks. Again, United can transition to either a 3-4-3 or a 3-3-2. We'll talk about those shapes a little bit later on. But Pogba at centre-back on the ball will give United a lot of command. Not only that, Paul Pogba is a very good decision maker. If he needs to go back to David De Gea, he will do. But then he'll move and he'll look to receive again. Pogba commanding as arguably a little bit of an old school sweeper. So the first benefit, of course, helps United's build up. The second benefit of playing Paul Pogba as a deep-lying playmaker, arguably United will be more direct. Pogba in this position as a number six, either between the centre-halves or in defensive midfield, is quite direct as a player. He likes the balls over the top. He likes to hit balls to Lukaku in terms of his chest or of his feet, which gets some link up with either the left midfielder running in, the 10 running in, or the right midfielder running in in terms of those flick-ons. Against Newcastle United, no outfield player completed more long passes than Paul Pogba. His range of passing opens those passes up. So he'll get the ball and he'll look forward. If the forward passes on, he'll play it, depending on whether that's a player that's made a run or alternatively to their feet. But that'll give United a little bit more tempo. I think that's one of the big things that have been missing from United at the moment when the ball's at centre-back. Bringing Matic in, but also Pogba as a defensive midfielder, that tempo will be created, which will move teams from left to right and then the space will be open to exploit. Pogba as a number six will be perfect for United's build-up because of those reasons. Defensively as well, there'll be a number of benefits for playing Pogba and Fred in midfield. Pogba is a type of transitional player that's quite tall, that's quite leggy, but he's good at winning the ball back. 
When he wants to go and win the ball or wants to go and make a slide tackle, he usually will come out with the ball. That's a big thing. Playing with defensive midfield, there'll be more opportunity for him to make those tackles or just simply move across, covering the, the left back, let's say, getting his body in between man and ball and then playing back to David De Gea. Again, calm and controlled in those situations. Different to situations where he receives the ball with his back to goal, and simply takes too many touches. Pogba in this defensive area is a little bit better with his decision making. Will recycle the ball if he needs to. He won't look to take people on. And arguably in that defensive midfield position, when he receives the ball, he'll have the play ahead of him. And he's better in a dribble in those situations. But we're talking about defensively. So Pogba can go out and cover the flanks. In terms of the relationship between Fred and Paul Pogba, it could work very similar to how France set up at the World Cup. We're talking Matuidi on the left wing. We're talking Kante, Pogba and of course Mbappe. That midfield could be similar at United. A little bit different in a way where Anthony Martial will be on the left wing, Pogba is a left central midfielder, Fred on the right, and then Juan Mata on the right wing. You're going to get a slightly different output than Matuidi and Juan Mata. Of course, Mata would come in and look to get on the ball instead of being that energetic Matuidi that will press, that will tackle. But the big thing there is Pogba has that outlet and Mbappe to play to. Defensively, in the transition when United have won that, that would be a great option for United to go long, hit the feet, and then they're breaking. In terms of winning the ball back, how it should work, it almost should work where the player on the, the strong side or the player coming over to the ball should be a bit more aggressive and then the other player should tuck in. So we're talking if the ball's on the right-hand side, Fred should be really aggressive to go out there and win the ball back and Pogba should shuttle over and look to either intercept or recover the ball. In terms of the World Cup, stats coming out of there, only Angulo Kante made more ball recoveries than Paul Pogba did in the tournament. Of course, France going on to win there, and they're a really good defensive transitional team that would win the ball back and then go early. With Pogba at six, not only can you win it back and intercept it, he will go early with that counter-attack. In terms of the comparison as well with Fred and Angulo Kante, they're a lot more similar than you think. They're very different in possession. On the ball, Fred is more of a playmaker, Kante is more of a guy that's going to ship it quickly and then move. But defensively, they're quite similar. They press in similar ways. They're both quite aggressive out of the blocks. They'll jump out of their shape, not to put pressure on the ball. Given for Manchester United, we could see a diamond shape with Pogba covering, Fred going to the tip in a central area. But the stats are quite similar. You look in the Champions League last season, Fred averaged a tackle every 17 minutes in that competition. Angulo Kante averaged a tackle every 16 minutes in the Champions League. So they're seeing how similar these two players are, both very aggressive. And arguably that allows Pogba to take this more laid back approach at defensive midfield that when he needs to step over and intercept with his long legs, he can do. Allowing Manchester United to be a little bit more solid in the middle. Playing Pogba as a defensive midfielder will open up space higher up the pitch, similarly to how Jorginho plays for Chelsea. We're taking those attacking midfielders and three guys that are going to come in. One guy, one matter we spoke about before. Anthony Martial on that left-hand side would provide the width, but also when he's in form, when he fancies it, he's pretty much an unplayable player. Through the middle a little bit more interestingly, Alexis Sanchez. Man United's shape in possession should transition to arguably a 3-3-2-2. A slightly lopsided 3-3-4 with Mata and Sanchez looking to get on the ball in central midfield, Fred providing that balance as an eight and Pogba as a six, both wing backs very, very high, always very important, and then Martial on the left-hand side, and of course Lukaku through the middle. The problem with Alexis Sanchez at Manchester United at the moment has been a lack of goals and assists. You've got to expect that from a player that's taken a big wage that they've got to contribute in that final third if they're an attacker. Going back to the winner that Sanchez scored against Newcastle United, it was from a central area when he made a run from across from the right-hand side. I'd argue that Sanchez, at the back end of his career, has been far better in the central areas than he has out wide. If we take the stats of the last season against Arsenal, he just outperforms himself even playing as a number 10 and a striker versus out wide. In 2016-17, Alexis Sanchez played 20 times as a centre forward in the Premier League. He scored 16 goals and grabbed 7 assists. In comparison to his entire time in the Premier League on the left wing, 69 games, 26 goals and 14 assists. Showing the output when you play Sanchez centrally versus out wide, much greater at the back end of his career. You've also got to take the form of Romelu Lukaku. Lukaku looks a little bit tired. Maybe there's a little bit of time where Marcus Rashford could come in and play as a centre forward, giving Lukaku a bit of a break, you know, considering his World Cup, not a lot of time off, and then back straight into United, either having Rashford as an option, but also playing someone near him, like an Alexis Sanchez, arguably as a front two, will give him a player to play off. If he drifts to the right-hand side, he'll have a target to cross to. But arguably with Sanchez in that position near Lukaku, the goal output of Alexis and Romelu is going to be a lot better. So to summarise guys, how Paul Pogba can save Mourinho's Manchester United first up, 
The 4-2-3-1 needs to be reintroduced. Pogba needs to be played as a defensive midfielder, dictating the play. Needs to be partnered with Fred in midfield. And Alexis Sanchez needs to be a number 10 with one matter on the right wing to give Pogba players to play through in between the lines. I've been Statman Dave. Get into the comments below. Can Paul Pogba save Mourinho? Yes or no? I'll get in that debate and see you guys there. Like the video, subscribe if you're new. See you guys later. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out Diogo Delo's scout report or alternatively, how Jadon Sancho is doing over in Germany for Borussia Dortmund.